Uh, welcome everybody to the Zoning and Planning Committee. Thank you for, for coming out on this hot day. It's warm, so not blinded. I uh, hope you can hear me. I'll try my best. We have a presentation once again by uh, Palatnik, right. ready for the developers at 2080 McDonald Avenue. Uh, this is, he'll talk more about it, introduce himself. But if I, if I got it right, it's on McDonald, that's some lights. Yeah. And the last time we visited, we spoke about parking, about entrances, about the size of the building, and uh, very thankful that he's coming back to tell us what's new. Thank you. And Thanks. if you could tell us about what your next what's Yes, I, I'd be happy to. So I, I remember some of the faces. My name is Eric Kalatnik. You didn't have masks on last time we spoke. Uh, I'm representing Ike Shehbar, the Shehbar family, and they own the property. You know it. You all live on the block. And you've been meeting with me, thankfully, you've been giving me some time for the last few years. And Alonzo is with us. If you could just click to the, is the slide that shows like the building layout, the first one of it, of uh, the first one of the building itself. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So I want to show you what's changed. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, stop, back, back. Okay. So this is what's proposed. So when we first came to you, we've been meeting with you for two years. A lot's changed since we first met with you. And we were trying to accommodate your concerns while still moving ahead with redeveloping the property. We're here today just to remind you, the property is zoned manufacturing. That's what it's zoned. Whether we like it or not, manufacturing is an intense zoning district. The sites lie dormant because it's benefited from up until now, a languishing interest in manufacturing space in New York City. We all know that. I grew up the son of a salesman. They used to manufacture all the goods on McDonald's Avenue that my father used to sell. There were furniture stores on McDonald's Avenue that my father used to sell. I used to spend my childhood driving up and down the block, stopping at furniture store at the car with the, the hammer we used to use to start the screwdriver to start the car we were talking about because they broke into it so much. Uh, so I know the neighborhood, and we know that in the last 30 years, that's gone. Furniture stores have all but disappeared. Everything has dis but all but disappeared, and you're left with basically empty manufacturing, former manufacturing buildings that have turned into ad hoc uses, turned into car washes, they've turned into repair things, they've turned into nothing that productive. But now it's Amazon. And now there are different things that are coming back in manufacturing. There's sort of a demand. And maybe people want it, maybe they don't. But the owner here doesn't want to do anything manufacturing. They don't want to build a manufacturing building here. They don't want to tear this down and build something new and have trucks coming in or do anything that's, that can be done in a manufacturing <coughs> zone. They'd like to build something residential. The kids want to be in your neighborhood. The seniors want to be in your neighborhood. There's nowhere to live. You got beautiful houses, the block is beautiful, and that's what's driving this whole development. So Ike and us have worked really hard for the last few years to hear everything you've been saying. So what we've done to try to make everything as nice and as palpable to your concerns as they could possibly be, is we've essentially geared the entire building so that it's pushed on to S and McDonald, which we're hoping, you know, I worked for Abe Batesh, I don't know if you know Abe Batesh, he's got a property on 19th Street, another developer. He lives in on on uh, on Avenue M, or where is it? On, I forget the cross street, but it's off of McDonald. And we did a rezoning for his building that's on McDonald, and he lives in the house behind it. And I said, Abe, what are you, we're building a building. You're the first client I've ever had. I'm rezoning and putting a house. I'm building it, so you can build a tall building yourself, you're going to block your backyard. He said, Eric, you know how loud McDonald Avenue is? He said, you're going to put a building up, you're going to, my backyard's going to be silent. It's going to be great. He said, I'm building a building that's going to protect my house by Anderson Windows there on that corner where Anderson is, right there, okay? And so that was the way he was looking at it. And that's what I'm trying to suggest to you. By the building being taller over here, it'll be seven and eight stories up at that corner on McDonald. Well, the oh, what's the total of the units? The 66 units. All together? All, all, let me just double out. check my number just to make sure because I'm reading about it. I'm going to look up my head. Reading it off the top of my head. 66 apartments, 20 of which would be totally affordable. Uh, What's affordable? Well, affordable depends upon a discussion that we want, want to have with you. There are three different levels that the city gives as options, and then the councilman can customize it. it. It's based upon the percentage of what's called the area median income. So the government or the city has a chart 
and then it breaks it down. So to give you an example, I have some notes here. Uh, let's just say uh, if you if it was uh, what's called 60% AMI, a one bedroom could be $740 a month. Okay, that's at the lower level. Now, one, a one bedroom in the regular marketplace, if you went on went to rent a nice one bedroom in a brand new building, probably $1,800 a month on the free market. So, you know, it's 1100 bucks a month. Now, this is without any government funding. This is just the city has created a program that says that if a developer walks in the front door and asks you to rezone to build a building, they've got to make a certain percentage available at a lower, a lower rate. So, How that's the idea. Mm -hmm. There's 20 of the units out of the 66 will be affordable. And they go into a lottery. They're not, it's not preference. Yeah, yeah. How long does it last? Forever. It's in perpetuity. Okay. So the idea of it is that the develop, and this is not just for this property. For every developer in the city that comes in and asks for a zoning change, that was the deal. You know, if, if you want to look at a very positive thing created out of this last administration, is that they they were the ones to posit to come up with the idea or to enact the idea of saying that you know if I'm coming in here representing somebody who's trying to build something bigger, let them give something back. The only problem with the whole program is it does put it on a developer's dime, so it's not as productive as it could be if there was more of a government involvement in things, but that's a bigger story. But it does work, it does create a If it's roughly, like you say, $800 for that one apartment, okay, fine. What is the percent that it moves up? That it, 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 it ranges, it's a conversation that we could get more into with the community board and the councilman. We're, we're just in the point, by the way, in the process where we're hoping to be certified soon into the rezoning. We've been getting the paperwork done, which means we're getting towards the end of the process now. So the discussion about the affordability right now is the right time to have it. But it's it's somewhere in the neighborhood of, you could have 40% of area median income, which was that number I gave you a second ago. Yeah, about it could be, it could go as high as $1,700 if it was 80%. Let's assume that $800 apartment they do a apartment. Just, just for all you say. How long? It's got to go up and up and up, of course. Uh, it goes up in like the rent stabilization, you know, you see every year when the rent board raises it, you know, you see those hearings that go on once so a year. Like two, five yeah, whatever that vote ends up being is how it goes up. That, that follows that. Yeah, it follows that. But it's forever. And uh, listen, it, it creates something. Uh, unfortunately, the city, last time we met with you, you asked us to look if there was affordable housing for seniors, right? De Blasio, if you picked up the papers on Christmas of this year, you got bad news. They did away with the program on Christmas for affordable housing specialized in seniors. You want to know why? You ready for the kicker? They did it on Christmas, no joke. Christmas. Everybody who pays attention to this nonsense is away on vacation. We all read this stuff because we like it. And we open up the paper, no joke, Christmas week. I'm busy, literally. That was the Christmas gift. We opened it up, and the reason why was because it's not fair to the younger poor people that the older poor people were getting preference. So since the younger poor people were not getting the same treatment as the older poor people, the whole program was done away with. Because the program gave an advantage because it was called affordable income restricted for seniors. It was specifically for seniors. Somebody decided that that's not fair. What about all the poor young people? My attitude is one of the poor young people who get a job, you know. Mm -hmm. The older people work their whole lives, you know. It's not so easy. My dad's 83 years old. I tell my dad, go get a job. It's like three jobs he's, he can do right now without killing himself. So... Is there a parking garage? Yeah, there's a parking garage downstairs. You asked for a lot of cars downstairs. Mm -hmm. There's 67 cars downstairs often. Talk about them. So there's not enough up. for every unit. There's not enough for every unit, but it's... There's 66 apartments. And they're not required to have anywhere near that amount. They're only required to have 20. And we're right next to a subway station. And even though a lot of people are going to drive, and it's self-parked, we could put more if we make it valet. So go to the parking lot if you can. You go uh, one more. There you go. So it's gigantic. So if they want, if we wanted to make it valet, they could. So if there's a parking shortage, they could easily put valet in double the amount of spaces. In addition to the fact that we're right up on the subway. So you, you'd really hope that if people were riding the subway and you do get young people that are in there that are working at a job somewhere that could use the subway, they'd be at least able to use it. I mean, that's the whole idea. So we're not sure if there's valid. There's none proposed right now. We could fit 67 without it. If it was to be a problem though, and if we were seeing a problem when the building was built, it could easily be switched to valet and you could increase it. You also brought up the valet without restricting the parking lot just to the residents and not the 
detail. Yes. Shop. And we agree to that. Okay. We're okay with that. We don't listen. It's Brooklyn. Nobody's driving to, to retail to pull into a parking lot for the most part. I mean, I pulled in here today to to to, to, to this. I think I, I was making a joke. I said, uh, I'm going to go get the car, right? I said, this is such good parking. I'm going to go get the car. I've never seen such good parking in Brooklyn in my life. And most people don't drive around Brooklyn looking for a, a shopping center off McDonald's, a parking spot to pull into. We're anticipating we get local people into the shopping center. Nobody's coming from another neighborhood to go drive to Avenue S to go shop in whatever supermarket or whatever drugstore is going in on the corner there, which is probably what it's going to end up being. It's going to be it's not the shopping uh, go to the first floor, if you can, Austin. I keep going to Austin. I apologize. I apologize, Alonzo. Austin's his, uh, his yeah, last um, better looking counterpart. Maybe, you know, yeah. I may have violated myself. Why don't we let you do the presentation and then try to answer all the questions? Oh, sure. I, also, because it's being, you know, this is it's recorded, being recorded and it will be shown after. So sure. You, you might want to order your comments. And I apologize. We just sort of jumped in because we had been engaged in a dialogue for so long. And I don't want to waste everybody's time sort of going to the beginning because I see all the faces and I know everybody knows what I'm talking I'm about. You know, so I, we can start from the beginning though. Austin, why don't you, Alonzo, uh, let's tell you whatever I feel like calling you. Right? Let's uh, <laughs> some call on you, everything you can. So to start from the beginning, to, to refresh your memory, this is the project area. You have Avenue S, you have Lake, and you have McDonald, and you have the subway. This is really the development site and it's owned by the Shea Bar family. And if you go to the next slide, please. And this is just everything we were just talking about. There'd be 66 apartments. There could be commercial space on the ground floor. There'd be a daycare on Lake Street. So that there's no commercial on Lake Street. Everything on Lake is just a daycare. Uh, and it would have a total of 120,000 square feet of floor area, which is a 4.6, what's called FAR, which is a floor area ratio. It would be proposed to be rezoned to what's called a C44L from an M11 and a small portion of slivers in R5B, but the majority of the properties that manufacture in the district. Next slide. Next slide, this is just, next slide. This you know, you know the whole block, so next slide. Keep going, one more. This is the site and all of its, its glory. This is across the street, excuse me, next slide. And here you go, if I can do that. Now we're oriented on the site. You know the site better than I do. See the subway behind it. Next slide. You just know that, so I'll keep clicking along. Just familiarize yourself with the block that you all live on, so for the benefit of the audience on the virtual world, keep clicking. Now you're getting into the heart of the rezoning action, which is to take these two corners and change them from the manufacturing zone and the R5B to the C44L zoning district. Next slide. This shows you again on the zoning map, enlarged, the change. The left side is what it is now. Manufacturing here in R5B there. It's proposed to be C44L over that whole entire piece. Next slide. This is, this is technical information of a map showing the same thing. Next slide. And another map showing you more of the same thing. It's all just the technical information, all saying the same thing, that the property will be asked to be renamed to C44L. Next slide. That's the other side of the block. Up here, it's two sides of the block. Next slide. And again, the same thing. We repeat ourselves. What your son just took the bar exam as lawyers. You're going to start hearing a lot of repetition. This is what we do. We keep repeating ourselves. Next slide. And for statistical information, next slide if you wanted that. And now you're right back where we were a moment ago, bringing you to the building that would be constructed if we ended up there. And for the benefit of the audience that's there virtually, uh, we have been meeting with the committee for a number of years already. The design that's here uh, has been tried to be created to reflect many of the comments that were made. And to your points, uh, just to call out, this is Lake Street. You see the daycare center here. You had asked us to try to push the parking entrance as forward as we could on Lake Street. That's as far as we can get to do that while still allowing for the separation of the daycare, the residential entrance, and have the commercial space front on Avenue S so it doesn't come back. Uh, we can't put a car entrance in over here on, on Avenue S because under the law there has to be a loading berth also. So we need two places for curb cuts. We need one for the cars and one for trucks to have the loading berth. We don't anticipate that they'll be using the loading berth too much because nobody in New York City uses a loading berth. When was the last time you saw 
any business take a tractor trailer in over a sidewalk backing up in Brooklyn. I don't think we've, anybody's ever seen that. It's not really too practical, but the zoning does require. So because of that, we're restricted in where we can place a loading berth that required, it's required to be in the middle of a block. So the loading berth is on Avenue S and the cars are here. The residential entrance is here. The commercial will be here, McDonald and on Avenue S. And then over here was when we all first started talking years ago, uh, nobody wanted to see on uh, Lake Street next to the existing homes, your homes, a taller building. So the owner agreed to restrict that building in height to a townhome. The owners are on Lake Street. How do they feel about it? Well, we've been doing our best to do outreach to folks. There were some folks over at some of the earlier meetings, and we've been speaking with the board, and that's why we're here tonight, to hear what people think. I mean, this isn't an application as of yet. It's an informational. Okay. Once he has an application, there will be outreach to the affected property owners and a public hearing where they'll be invited to... to so they know what's going board. on. Um, there's no application. I mean, the public will post it. And to bring you into what's, what Marty was just saying, into the process, we are in the preliminary stages of a ULARP application, a rezoning application, which means that we are in what's called the pre-certification part of it. It's sort of a vague thing to say. It means we're in the paperwork part of it, and it's been going on for years, because that's how long the paperwork part of it goes on for. We are at the tail end of it. We're hoping that they're gonna kick us in and any day, and call us and tell us, your paperwork is signed off, we're gonna certify you. Once they certify it, that's almost like a wedding date. That means that now it's gonna become public. And that's what Marnie was just referring to. And when it becomes public, then we go through the formal EULA review process, land use review process, where you have a formal community board meeting, and then the borough president's meeting, and then the city council, the city plan, and the city council. We're not there yet. We're only in the stage before that but it's, we've made it a practice to keep going back to you through the years and through time to hear your thoughts and redesign and address it so that when we get to the end, we're not throwing something uh, in front of you that you don't haven't had an input on, at least if you vote for it or against it, at least it's been presented already and you understand that we tried to do it with you. No, not yet. They will be using a minority women owned business enterprise, not in necessarily in the construction of it uh, as the general contractor, but during the construction, the contractor will be using minority women owned business enterprises, and they will also be using locally sourced labor. Uh, but it will go out for bidding, and uh, we'll see who will be building it. But the idea is to build it with local companies and with minority women owned business enterprises and as many Brooklyn businesses as we possibly can. Uh, oh, there's more than enough people around New York City to build the building right now. Will there uh, be consideration for the last four maybe health care benefits uh, being paid to these construction workers? Uh, uh, that, you will see that on the construction projects you know, in the open shop market. Yeah, that I don't know. Uh, uh, I asked people during the middle of the pandemic if any workers were found, uh, uh, found themselves without health care uh, in, in a health crisis. Uh, it's something that uh, I, I think will go a long way to. Uh, I think it would too. And I think that uh, as a part of, like you said, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, that's what we just talked about that. That's not only anymore just the size of the building going up, but it's what's being provided to the people, both during the development of it and the people that are going to live in. I'll speak to the Shea of our family about it. Uh, they are active builders. I'll ask them if they have any builders in mind, and I'll try and get you some information as to what their, uh, what their protocol has been with respect to health care and other, all other kinds of benefits, not just health care. Yeah, there are hundreds of construction workers that live in the immediate area. That's why I bring the subject up. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for bringing it up. No, it's, it's important because the, the city is, it's hard to build a union in New York City, but that doesn't mean that the, the developers should be building without benefits and the workers should Benefits. It doesn't have to be a union to be a great job. It can be both. So I agree with you a thousand percent. Okay. I just wanted to say hello and reintroduce it to you. Well, thank you. Thank you.
they should probably go to some of them. Does everybody want to see the rest of the renderings at all? Uh, yeah, I have to look for Oh, this whole block, lake, everything about it. There's been a daycare added. There's uh, when we first came, since we first came to years ago, was, was the, a townhouse. The first presentation, the daycare was there. It was, but it wasn't located just on that side of it. So we've agreed to not put any commercial on the Lake Street frontage, and we've also pushed the parking garage entrance. For the back on this well, side. Still on the same side as the, as the daycare. Right. The, yes, we couldn't change that. I know that was a concern, but the site's constrained because you got McDonald's, it's got the poles and the subway, so you sort of. Uh, major concern. I understand. We, we tried hard. It is set up in the way that the children will not be, there's plenty of room right here for people to get in and out of their cars, go right into the daycare center from the street. And they won't be in the way of anybody coming in now. But I, but I understand what you're saying. Believe that I have a brick at the side. Yeah, I know the Brooklyn one. Why is the daycare not necessary? It's there, right? Daycare is. Oh, and daycare is there. Yeah, there's such a demand. Well, I don't know. It's there. Yeah, 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 Close it up by four o'clock in the afternoon. It's not open on the weekend. There's not much garbage. You know, the kids. There's not much the food product they eat. It's relatively clean as far as food goes. And you know, so as far as no, the use goes. Is there a requirement? No, no, it's not a requirement. There's just a big demand for it. We're trying. There's a daycare there now. We're trying to find a use that will not impact people on Lake Street and cause any sort of disruption. And that's like a fairly benign use. For not everybody loves children, but yeah. Eric, you uh, you mentioned the, the polls and things on McDonald's. So just just to make it clear for for the audience, why the entrance again could not be on McDonald Avenue? Yeah, McDonald. Uh, the, you know, the, from the movie, I see we have a lot of people who might remember the French Connection. You know, it's fame what made Brooklyn famous, right? Uh, the movies back then, they, Gene Hackman went up and down around all the, yes, the train. Yeah, you know? have and the loading bays, if you look at them, have got plenty of chips out of them, and plenty of pits on them, and plenty of mix out of them. It's not easy, obviously, to have a car maneuver around those poles. So a loading bay, maybe for the truck driver who's coming into the same delivery every single day, but you start having random people driving in, visiting people, they have relatives come, they have events, they have birthday parties. Yeah, and them all drive into a parking lot, the visitors coming in and out with poles. It, it gets quite difficult, not just to add, mention the fact there's a subway platform right there, the subway entrance right there. So now you got, you know, the, the, the cars, you got the poles, you got the people, not to mention the fact that it's McDonald Avenue, which is the most Michigan road I've ever driven on in my entire life. But you don't show the subway. Eight, eight, uh, this is Lake Street. Eight, 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 so we can show you an image. Why don't you go to some pictures on the, on the subway side? So you can start to, you know, and you know it better than I do. Uh, but so this is a view of where the train is. Yeah. But if you go to get a picture, an actual picture, a lot of them, we have a bunch of pictures over there. I, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, you all know it better than I do. I mean, none of you could obviously it's it's difficult to, for people to start maneuvering around. The 86th Street, they maneuver left and right going underneath in the parking. Area. I've driven 86th yeah. Street and I've gotten almost gotten killed on numerous occasions driving on 86th I Street while they all maneuver place. around. Well, the buses that? stop, the taxis there. There's somebody double parked. There's somebody walks into the walkway. It's a lot going on. Do you hey, right. in any street? Really? You yeah. It's skill level. You're a good driver. But I'm saying <laughs> you have that situation in any street. Yeah, but more so, I agree, but more so, I think more so on the poles. Do well, you recall the development, uh, I don't know if you were the attorney on this one, uh, with the, the school, the you know, several blocks down that actually has off of McDonald's their buses to keep them off Lake. They want they wanted to bring them on to expand the lake and the community gently told them that was a good idea. Right. Um, but they were allowed to, they were allowed to have a, what would you call it, a, I call it a turn off area. Uh, it's kind of, kind of like, you know, like having a, uh, like a conduit. Uh, it's no, almost perfect for a bus, though, because they just pull it and line up. Well, on. Why, why didn't they consider something like that on? Again, you, get, you have the subway okay, entrance, but, right? You have the subway entrance right there. You have a lot of people going up and down, a lot of pedestrian activity. You know, it wasn't really 
perceived to be the best idea to start adding cars into the mix of that, whether it be trucks, cars, or anything with other people. It's just a lot of activity with everything. So that was how we settled to, to have to put it over that. And the board will have an opportunity to Yeah, listen, if everybody decides they want to see it on the other side, we can redesign to show it over there. But it's really a lot of thought. A lot of thought went into it to try to get it. And, and we understand this in turn. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time.